I want to show you a little trick for the aspiring surgeons in training. After surgery, if you have an opportunity to have access to excess tissue, this is tissue left over from an abdominoplasty. And what we can do is create our own little surgical field and do a little surgery for practice before it really counts on a specimen. So this does not need to go to pathology and it's excess, it's just skin and fat. And what we're going to do is do a little um, pretend surgery for practice of suturing. So first thing, we'll make an incision here. And we can also use this tissue to practice. Here I've made an incision into the dermis. Now we're going to go a little deeper using the belly of the blade into the subcutaneous fat. Now we have a nice clean incision and we want to practice suturing this back together. So, what do we need? A suture scissor mayo scissor, uh, a needle driver, a pickup with teeth, and a marking pen is also very helpful. So step one, we made the incision. Sometimes it's helpful when we're practicing to create little hash marks here that line up the skin edges properly and then when we're a little more advanced, we probably don't need to make these hash marks. So we're going to use an excess suture here. First thing I want to show you is a simple stitch. So simple stitch, we're going to hold the tissue by the dermis immediately adjacent to where we want to insert the suture. Now, instead of letting go of the suture, if we, I mean, letting go of the tissue, if we continue to hold the tissue, then the needle is not going to move and we can easily pick up that needle with either the needle holder or the, uh, or our fingers. And then now we have a nice bite here where we can see where we need to go. Right at our hash mark, we're now going to pick up the suture again and do it in reverse. So we're going to pick up the tissue by the dermis, like I showed you before. We're going to go in deep and get a nice square purchase so that we have the same amount of tissue in our stitch on this side as on this side. And then we're going to do a tie. So now I'm going to show you a tie using my hands, a hand tie. So it doesn't matter how you create that loop. There's all kinds of fancy ways with your finger. You can watch the, uh, the YouTube on that. But basically all you're doing is creating two throws and bringing it down square. What does square mean? It means bring it down like this, as opposed to like that. So the untangled look is square. Now, as I pull those together, gently, 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 my skin margins come together without excess tension. And with the square knot going straight across. So there's two throws. And I'm going to put down one throw square and I can adjust my tension a little bit and then I'm going to put down another throw square and another throw. So I have with a stitch that's a simple stitch, I'm going to have four knots. If it's a braided stitch like this Mercilink. 
If it's a monofilament, I may want to put five or sometimes even six throws because a monofilament will tend to come unraveled. So now we're going to do a mattress suture. So this is going to be a vertical mattress, meaning all this, all of my stitch is going to be going this direction. So I'll show you a vertical mattress first. I'm going to pick up my tissue by the dermis here. I'm going to go in relatively far away from the margin. Now I'm going to go straight across. Again, I'm going to try to pick it up by the dermis so I don't crush the skin. And if, remember, if I keep holding on to the tissue with my pickup, then the needle is not going to be able to go anywhere. So now I have my simple stitch. Remember, we just learned how to do a simple stitch. We could tie that like so, but maybe we're having trouble and when we bring it together, the margins of the skin are inverting like, like this. So if that happens, a vertical mattress is very helpful. So then with the second stitch, we'll come close to the edge and make it relatively superficial or near the margin. And now we can evert the edge. So I'm going to bring that together and you see how that everts your tissue. Now all I have to do is three more throws to complete that knot. And if it's too tight, all I have to do is separate it a little bit. If I want to tighten it up a little bit, just pull that. But I want to make this loose enough that I'll be able to get in later with a scissor and cut that stitch when it comes time to remove the suture. So that's a vertical mattress. Now let's look at a horizontal mattress. So now let's have a look at a horizontal mattress suture. So remember a vertical mass mattress suture went up and down. Now we're going to do a horizontal mattress suture. So that's going to go like this. So we're gonna first, we're gonna hold on to the dermis. We're gonna go in. We're gonna go in straight down at a right angle. Then we're going to go across the tissue exactly where we want. You can even, if there's a little blood, you can even mark it like this and your suture can put a little bit of blood here on the other side so you can see where it belongs. So we're gonna go across. And then instead of going back in line with our previous stitch, we're gonna go this way horizontally. And then again, just go the same pattern backwards now from deep to superficial. Now, like with most of our stitches, we're going to do double throw. And that's a horizontal mattress. And you can see that does not bring your tissue together too well, but there's some times where you want to use a horizontal stitch. So that's a horizontal mattress. Usually you're going to use a vertical mattress. Let's go over that one more time. So we're going to start further back, go superficial deep, and the opposite side, superficial, deep superficial rather. Now, again, we could tie this as a simple suture, but we want to evert the skin margin, so we're gonna go into the skin margin here, close, very small bite, close to the margin. And if you go too far back with this last pass, the skin margins are not gonna to come together. So you've gotta make it fairly small. Bite, that last bite. 
and you can see that'll bring your tissue together very nicely with minimum amount of tension. This is uh, ethylon or nylon, black nylon. This is a fairly, this is a monofilament suture and it will tend to unravel like most monofilaments. So if you're gonna use a monofilament, you want extra knots. Here's the stitch and you can see how that everts your skin margins. You wanna make sure there's enough distance between your first and your second pass here so you can get a scissor in there later to take that stitch out. If it's too close, it's gonna to be too hard to take that out. The other problem, you don't wanna make this too tight because you don't wanna strangle the tissue and end up with hash marks here. Nobody's gonna appreciate that. So let's practice this one more time. Simple stitch superficial to deep, very square. I've got an even amount of tissue here that in my stitch. And I'm going to take a look and see where do I need this to be to line these margins up. So I've already created a little cheat here with my hash mark. So I know it needs to go like this. In real life, there's a lot of pushing and pulling that goes on after an incision is made. And it's necessary to be careful about lining one side up with the other to make sure you line it up properly. So I'm going to pull that down with just enough tension on that stitch to bring the margins of the skin together and then no more tension because if there's excess tension it will strangle the tissue in between and the patient will get a hash mark that is a scar going this way from my suture. So there's a vertical mattress suture and a simple suture. Now let's practice a running suture. So we can begin here with a simple stitch. And then we're going to do our first stitch as a simple suture. Bring the skin edges together. going to cut just the short one but before I cut it here's a little trick we can actually use a uh, use a hemostat if we had one but we can put a hemostat on the end of this and use it to hold tension so that we have some counter tension so we're not going to do that in this case but just a good little trick to have. So now I've cut the short end and now I'm ready to go. Someone can follow me by holding that stitch at about the, that's a hundred yards, about the 30 yard line, about a third. And I can do this freehand or I can hold the tissue, which is more precise so that I am inserting my needle exactly where I want. And I'm going to come straight across. Now, if I come straight across underneath, then I'm going to be traveling on the outside. So I'm going straight across here and then Look what happens on the outside. When I do that, then I'm gonna be traveling on the outside, so it's gonna be slanted. So I'll do one more stitch so you can see that. So I need to do my advancing here on the outside, just like a uh, lacing up a uh, shoe. You can do the same thing. You can either travel on the inside of the lace or on the outside. So now there's going to be a slant this way because of my traveling. Now, let's say I want to have the stitches look neat and going straight across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel underneath 
By travel, I mean how much I'm advancing. Then all of my stitches are going to be, all my uh, stitches are going to be going straight across as opposed to at an angle. So we want to have them evenly spaced and the same amount of distance from the wound margin apart so it looks neat and tidy. And with just enough tension to hold that together and not making it so tense like that, that it's all puckered because that's going to create extra injury to the skin and our scar is going to have little hash marks as a consequence. So just enough tension to hold that together and also appreciating the fact that post-operatively there's in real life there's going to be a little bit of swelling that happens which will bring your tissues together a bit as well. The other trick is to take out the stitches on time. If you leave the sutures in too long, the epithelium will grow down along the suture track and create a little punctate scar. And uh, that usually happens on the face after about five days and elsewhere in the body a little bit more than that. For example, on the tummy about a week to 10 days or on the lower extremity about 10 to 14 days. So taking out the sutures on time will prevent that from happening, whether you're using sutures or staples or whatever it is, that's how you get those hash marks, is those little punctate scars is the epithelium growing down. The, uh, so just a few little tricks. It's practice, practice, practice with suturing. It's just a simple manual skill. You can learn how to do it. Take advantage of every time you have an opportunity to use a little extra suture. You have a, a real life specimen that doesn't need to go to pathology that you can use. Be, be really good about uh, grabbing a needle holder, some pickups and scissors, some extra suture material and practicing a little bit. And if there's a more experienced surgeon around, scrub tech, somebody who can help you, ask a little advice, you'll get little uh, tips of the trade. So I hope that helps. And I look forward to seeing you back here in Aronowitz land soon where everything is exactly the way I like it. Bye-bye now.